Hi there, this is Sheena Rowlands and today I'm sharing with you my latest layout for Simple Stories Saturdays. And for this layout I'm using the Simple Stories range called Simple Vintage Garden District. This range is a few years old now but I've still got some of this in my stash. I think it was about 2020 and I've particularly got quite a few uh, sheets from the 6x8 paper pad. So I decided I'm going to actually make them the focus of this layout. So you can see that I've got uh, varying patterned papers there and I'm just moving them around to have a look to see how I feel um, with them against each other. I've also got a few of these chipboard frames that were in the same collection and I'm definitely going to use one of those to house two photographs of my daughter. So I've cherry picked the papers that I want and there's eight of them there and I'm just marking with a pencil how um, wide I want them to be. I want them to be slightly different widths. I don't want them to be all identical. Um, so I'm just giving them a bit of a mark with a pencil before I trim them with my cutter. So whilst I get on with that, um, I wondered if you've heard of Simple Story Saturdays before, whether this is your first visit here or you've been here a few times, but it is a monthly YouTube hop and um, Everybody that takes part uses a different, well, uses any Simple Stories range. We could, I could be using the same range as someone else, but um, we'll all be using Simple Stories or making very different layouts because we've all got very different styles. So if you have the chance, I will list everybody else below in the hop and I would recommend you uh, make a cuppa and have a look what they've got on offer because there's some really talented scrappers out there and there's some uh, real inspiration too. So always worth checking out, definitely. So I've just put in my mini distressor there and I'm just running down the sides of each and I finish that off camera and I'm going to start to figure out where I want to put them. So I'm going to start with the centre ones and work out because I've decided that I would like a little bit of white space between each of the strips. So that means there's a good chance that the end strips will overhang the cardstock which is absolutely fine because that is what I'm happy to cut that and trim that at the end. So that is why I predominantly started in the centre. So you'll also notice I'm not actually using much tape to stick them down at this stage. Um, that's because I have more plans for them and I don't want to get them completely stuck down. So just rubbing out any pencil marks that I can see and I'm happy with their, how they look when one of the frames goes over the top. I think that's going to work. So I've stuck those down and I've actually run them down on the sewing machine. You can't see it very well, but each stripe I've sewn um, two vertical lines on, apart from the outer edges where I've only sewn the inside distressed edge down. And that's why they didn't need much tape, so I, because I knew I was going to stitch them down. So I've put a bit of green uh, paper from the same range behind the frame just to because otherwise your eye was distracted by the bits you can see around the photograph and I've brought in all the ephemera that I have left for this collection and I've decided I'm going to embellish either side of this frame so I'm just having a look what bits and pieces I've got I'm conscious that you've got uh, a cut line across where the 6x8 papers stop and I want to subtly cover that line um, so it doesn't get your attention later on, if that makes sense. You'll see it change, hopefully, as I just expand um, the frame by adding some of the ephemera underneath. I like to look at all the bits. I like to make sure I'm not missing out on anything that I might want to use. And I toy with the idea of putting some flowers underneath the frame, but I decide I'm going to do something else instead. So I'm just having a look at the bits that I've got. I've got some of the brads as well, but not all of them, but I'm thinking I might add a few of those just to add another layer of texture around this frame. Well, this style of layout would work really well with lots of Simple Stories ranges if you've had the chipboard frames and the paper pads. I mean, you could certainly use offcuts from uh, bigger papers, uh, the 12 by 12s, I mean, but I do find that the prints on the 6 by 8s, because they've been um, printed smaller, it, um, you, they, you get a better effect when you're in smaller pieces. So I don't know whether you noticed there, I've got some craft foam underneath the green um, just to lift the photos up and I'm going to add a little bit of foam to the back of the chipboard frame as well, enough that it doesn't peek through, just so that lifts that up as well so that I can tuck 
the photographs in. So I'm just making sure none shows and I will stick that down as well. So I've just run in my ruler there. I want the frame to be pretty central. So I was just checking that I was because obviously the stripes aren't all identical above. So I've come in with a couple of distress oxides and I'm just going to add a little bit of pink, um, just literally like a blush to the cardstock below and around the photos. Um, so I'm just using a couple of different ones there and, and a um, soft brush. And if you notice, I touch the ink pad and I'm dabbing off the most ink first on a piece of scrap before I'm bringing in it onto the layout because I don't want any harsh edges from the brush. So it's just a bit of faint colour, which is barely there by the end, but it just, I think, helps soften the whole effect. And that's why I've not actually stuck the frame down to the green just yet. So it's funny, the ink looks quite prominent, but when you by the time you see the finished layout, you'll barely notice it. So I'm going to get that frame properly stuck down now with a bit of wet glue just in the centre. And I've only stuck it in the centre because I want to make sure I can tuck bits in. And I'm going to tuck the photos in. And I've actually swapped the photos over uh, from where I originally had them. And I'm just going to apply a foam pad on the back to help them stay supported in the frame. All the bits and pieces I decided I was going to lay around the frame, I pushed the bits from the left to the left and the bits from the right to the right. So I now know what bits I had in mind. You could take a photograph of your layout if you wanted to make sure you get things uh, into just the right place. But um, I just knew that I, I knew the bits that I wanted to use. So I've just moved them over and I'm going to start to layer them back up using some foam as I go and some double sided tape. You'll be very pleased that I do my voiceovers after I make my videos because I made this video whilst at a retreat and there were so many different topics of conversation. <laughs> Uh, you would you would uh, struggle to keep up between TV, film and lots of other bits of gossip. So uh, it's just making me smile because uh, as I rewatch this back and I remember some of the things that were said at the time this layout was being made. So I'm now working on the right hand side, tucking bits in. I've also brought in a shenanigans 3D embellishment that I'm going to add to the bottom of the photo frame. It's not attached as yet, but... I've just got it in position so I know how I want everything to look. And I really like the bird on the branch and I'm going to add a little bit of foam behind that just to lift him up. There's so many really nice um, elements to this range and I've still got plenty. There's definitely going to be at least one more uh, in the near future I think that's going to come from this. And uh, one of the uh, larger die cuts I'm actually cutting up a little bit. and I'm starting to cut it, cover over that line. Do you remember I mentioned the line where the orange... Uh, papers on either side you could see where they finish so I'm going to actually I've just subtly tried to cover them with a, a sprig. I've brought in a poker tool and a mat just so I can add some brads on as well and I'm going to dot them around. I think there's about five that I use in the end. I go for the plainer ones because I think there's enough pattern going on with all the papers but I don't feel like the papers are competing. I think maybe because the patterns are smaller and there's a range of pinks and peaches there but I do think the green in the photos helps them really stand out. So I've cleared the decks a bit. I'm just going to stick down that heart. Um, I'll, list, I'll list the website for that at, in the comments. And I'm just going to add a couple of word phrases because you may have noticed there isn't a title on this. So I add dream big on the right and best ever on the left. I think there's a lot going on on this layout that can do the talking for it. Um, I just found a, one last brad that I think I want to add and here's the final image. Thank you so much for watching. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you like what you've seen and hop round everybody else and I hope to see you here again real soon. Bye for now.